Hello. So it's me again, Wolfgang, and I have made another video related to astrophotography. This time it's not so much about India or Astroberry. This time I will try to resolve one question that has kept me occupied during the development of my own telescope control system called TSC. And while this is a, let's say, <laughs> An endless nerd project going on. I wanted to see how accurate ST4 times are actually. ST4 was introduced some 30 years ago. This device featured a tiny CCD chip of something like 190 times 120 something pixels and an electromechanical device. The electromechanical device operated mechanical relay switches that simply turned a current or a voltage on and off for a given period of time in order to carry out corrective steps in auto guiding. Nowadays, this is being done via a USB cable that is connected to your camera and an interface on the camera translates the commands sent via USB to those old school analog pulses. So while USB is of course very fast, it has a latency. It takes a computer's operating system some time to establish communication and to send this tiny little bit of information. I wanted to measure this delay with various pieces of software and a few cameras which I happened to have at hand. Let me tell you what I've done. I took an Adafruit Itsy Bitsy M4 microcontroller. Despite its name, this is a pretty powerful one with 120 megahertz. And I connected its regulated 3.3 volts output to the common input of ST4. Here we see such an ST4 connector, this time from the ST4 connector of the company ZWO. And we see that the second pin is called the common pin. Sometimes this is called ground, but this is not true. Basically, we're seeing switches here. So we have four switches connected to the common line. And if one of these switches is being operated, then we see a signal on one of the other pins. So here's my experimental setup. I have connected the 3.3 volts to common. The 3.3 volts are regulated and are the signal level of the microcontroller itself. And I've connected the right or right ascension plus pin to a digital input of the microcontroller. So here's my setup. As I'm away from uh, my observatory, I have simply connected a little home build mount I made here with a QHI camera and the ST4 cable goes into the ECPC M4. In a first attempt, I started up KSTARS I'm connecting the QHY camera here. And once I'm connected, I can go to the guiding window. I can enter two seconds as a pulse and I connected a multimeter. So what you will see now is that the multimeter switches to 3.3 volts for two seconds when I operate the ST4 pulse. In total, I found three devices that can translate USB to ST4 in the attic. This includes the aforementioned older QHY camera, a so-called shoestring GP USB device, which is a USB to ST4 interface of its own right, and a more modern Tech camera. In this case, it is branded by the Theater Optics as a planetary camera.
for those interested, I also have here the sketch. You can see I've defined a few variables in the Arduino IDE. I'm opening the serial port and I'm opening the input number seven as a digital IO. If I read something and the Boolean variable measurement start that was not set before, I set that Boolean to true and I measure the starting time. Here's a small delay of one millisecond. And if the gate is down again, I compute the time difference and the result is printed to the serial command window of the Arduino IDE. And here you can see what I'm doing. Now the sketch is running. I'm sending a two second pulse and the microcontroller has measured this time. So let us take a look at the standard latencies for 250 100 millisecond pulses sent via various configurations. The configuration you've just seen is the old QHY5, SD4 connected to the camera, KSTARS on the desktop, and of course the camera is connected to the desktop via USB 2. I have a mean delay of 14 milliseconds. If I move that setup to Astroberry and I carry out the same procedure with PHD2 on a Raspberry Pi 4B with 4 gigabytes of memory, I have a mean delay of 15 milliseconds. Using the GPUSB shoestring device, camera connected to an Indie server and PHD2 on Windows 11, I have 30 milliseconds. And with a more modern TopeTech camera, PHD2, and my Windows 11 laptop, I see a delay of 11 milliseconds. So as we can see, the changes are small. We usually end up with a latency of 10 to 15 milliseconds. If we change the length of the pulse, the picture stays the same. A 50 millisecond pulse sent from KSTARS ends up with a mean delay of 40 milliseconds, uh, a 500 milliseconds SD4 pulse gives us 30 milliseconds latency, and on Astroberry I see 50 milliseconds on a 500 millisecond SD4 pulse. What is however noteworthy is if we look at the results, for instance for the TopeTech camera, and we take a look at the distribution of those delays, we see that the assumption of a Gaussian curve is not correct, and therefore the standard deviations are not really meaningful in the way they are being computed here. We see a right-handed um, uh, skewness of the curve, and the majority of all latencies lies in the range of 10 to maybe 12 milliseconds in general. So, the question is, what can we do about this? How can we avoid this constant latency to affect our autoguiding? For me, working on my uh, controller, I will implement some sort of an option to add a continuous latency compensation. But that's, of course, uh, a very nerdy approach. What one can do is you can observe how long your average pulse, especially in right ascension, is, and you just reduce the aggressiveness of your guiding in such a way that these additional 10 to 15 milliseconds, which appear to be constant, do not uh, influence your results. 
for me, this was quite interesting, uh, an exam actually, so it definitely paid off. And I hope you found it interesting too. Thank you very much for your attention.